So let's continue the comments of the fifth round game from Alista. The move number 17, queen g3. Not a reason for pride. Such an obvious move can be predicted by anyone. See that with the knight on e5, the white queen wouldn't be able to get to d3. But Rostov's fans shouldn't panic. I'm offering the answer rook d8 with a simple threat e5. And, then the, and if the white queen goes to a6, then after the move of knight d5, bishop d2, black can win back the pawn with the blow knight takes c3. Now, now that's a subtle and complex move, which Shahriar saw. In this variation, White really lost the advantage. The weakness of the first horizontal is confining its rook. There's still the unanswered question. What is White going to do in an answer to knight d5? Uh, it's just that here to bishop d2 uh, followed knight takes c3. It's doubtful that the attempt to play to win could be serious after the trade on e3. Knight d5, rook b1, knight takes e3, f takes e3, h5. I personally would be on black side. A logical answer. White is planning rook d1 with the later move of the knight from d4. There are two perspective plans for black. The first one is move queen d5, planning the move of the pawn e6. The second is the move h5 with the clear plan to move the pawn to h3 and come up with the mating net for the white king. I think black has a fantastic game. So my critique for the move 9b6 was I guess too quick. Looks like black has many ways to fix his counterplay. If that's not a surprise, I don't know what is. I wasn't expecting that materialism. Giving a knight against a bishop in an open position is quite risky, but it has to be locked on a case by case basis. Looks like Kasimjanov's idea is that the opponent won't be able to free the bishop from c1 without training it for a knight, but after f3, white has some hopes. Looks like the opponents are trying to get a solid land under their feet. I studied the variation f3, in which black had to be very accurate. For example, it doesn't equate due to this following variation. And white wins the pawn. Oh, sorry, I didn't show the variation e3, knight e5. An attempt to win the knight on c4 would be punished cruelly. f4, rook to c4, queen b3, and so on, until queen h1 check, and the extra pawn is guaranteed for black. The grandmasters don't stop surprising me. I was expecting queen d5 and this little variation. That looks very much like a quality, but digging deeper into the position, I understood why Rustam didn't, wh what Rustam didn't like about it. e3, and this, the weakness of the a throw doesn't let black trade the light pieces, but then after f6, he's still alright. On the other hand, black has a solid position here as well. A small achievement for white, he centralized the queen first. Having two pawns on the queen's side is the only resource for a fruitful battle. Well, black can't trade them. Mami Jaroff is planning to play till the end, and that's the right approach. He's not risking anything. In such a dry and solid position, white can't lose. A responsible move. Kasimjanov isn't letting the pawn h4 to move forward, but at the same time slightly weakening his own pawn structure. If he decides to protect the pawn h5 with the pawn g6, then the black squares by the black king will be a nice stop for the white pieces. Finally, the mission became free, but the knight c4 is still controlling many important squares and isn't letting his opponent to do anything. 
Smart airplane. Now there will be no freedom. By the way, the poor bishop will have to return to its original square. Mommy and Diarf is creatively looking for problems in Black's position. The white queen is aiming at the square g6. The bishop isn't proud. It can retreat as well, but the pawns can't go back. Looks like the building of the wanted construction could be thought of as finished. Black completely read the bishop on c1 of perspectives, shaking his castle. Uh, wish just the queen is an uh, well, just the queen is an unreal unrealistic goal. Objectively speaking, the battle is going towards a peace agreement. The difference in the time usage isn't big. Mami Jarov has an hour and 19 minutes. Kazim Janov has 38 minutes. But in such a simple position, that really doesn't matter. The last important question, how to defend the pawn h5? Looks like there's a number of worthy answers. And this is one of them. Also good is um, queen g4, since the trade is obviously to black's advantage. A draw. We saw not the most exciting, but very theoretically important game, which confirmed black's solidity in Roman Nishan's variation of the Nimtsovich defense. Looks like the move bishop d2, move number 9, doesn't give any problems for him. As we see from the comments, black had chances to take over the initiative. So, Kasim Janov paused his fall and then is serving off positive emotions before the day of rest. Mami Diarov also shouldn't be disappointed. In such a difficult term, and half a point is a great starting block for a jump. For you again, dear audience, we're Grandmaster Sergei Shipov. Tomorrow we rest, but we'll see you day after tomorrow at 3 p.m. Moscow time for the sixth round. Have a good day.